As you know, wars aren't just fought on the battlefield. There are a number of ways to cripple the enemy. One of the most important ones is crushing morale, making the enemy lose the will to fight, lose the will to pick up a weapon. And this is the best victory of all. And that is what Israel tried to achieve on Friday when they released the video of Yaya Sinwar's final moments. Those of you following the war closely have already seen this. Sinwar in the chair, covered in dust, trying to throw a stick at a drone. Israel thought that this would project its strength and demoralize its enemies. But the opposite happened. Israel's enemies thought that Sinwar's last moments were inspirational. He was wearing the symbolic Palestinian kefir scarf. His arm was injured, but he was still defiant, still trying to attack the high-tech Israeli enemy. That is how Hamas is choosing to interpret Sinwar's death. So in terms of the narrative war, releasing Sinwar's video was a self-goal by Israel. And now they are in damage control mode. Before his death video, what had Israel been saying about Yahya Sinwar? They portrayed him as a coward, lurking in the tunnels, protecting himself with human shields, while ordinary Palestinians paid the price for his actions. That was the original Israeli narrative. And now they are trying to reinforce it. Tonight, we are declassifying footage of Sinwar from just a few hours before the October 7th massacre, as well as his movements inside Gaza as he fled over the past year. That was allegedly footage from October 6, 2023. That's last year, October 6, the night before the Hamas attack on Israel took place. Sinwar is seen preparing to live underground. He's moving supplies, water bottles, pillows and mattresses. He's taking his wife and children into an underground shelter. Now, Israel says it's beneath his house in Khan Yunus. So they claim that he was hiding in a bunker just hours before the October 7th attack. Why is Israel releasing this footage now, more than a year after it allegedly happened? Well, to reinforce their original narrative that Sinwar was a coward who protected himself and his family and let ordinary Gazans die. Israel also highlighted some other things. Last month, Sinwar's DNA was found on a piece of tissue he used. A few hundred meters from a tunnel where six Israeli hostages were brutally ex executed in Tel Sultan in Rafa. Then, Sinwar fled yet again. So apparently Sinwar was surrounded by hostages whom he used as human shields and disposed of at his convenience. Then listen to this. Killing Sinwar is the result of a year of operational and intelligence efforts to bring him and other Hamas leaders to justice. He said Sinwar's death was the result of intelligence efforts. Do you remember the recent headlines? They call Sinwar's killing a stroke of luck. They said he was found by chance. Now Israel wants to change that narrative as well because it makes their intelligence services look weak and Israel cannot afford to show any weakness. Also, did you notice something else? The Israeli spokesperson said all of what he did in English. So he wasn't speaking to the domestic audience. He was speaking to all of us, English speakers around the world. That message was directly from the IDF to us to make sure that we are listening to their version of events. Israel does it quite well. It reaches out to its audience, its intended audience, directly. Let me show you another example. This is a post by the IDF's Arab spokesperson. He put that up in Arabic. And here's a rough translation of what he said. Did Sinwar's wife enter the tunnel with him on October 6, carrying a Birkin bag estimated to cost about $32,000? I leave the comment to you. 
While the people of Gaza do not have enough money for a tent or basic necessities, we see many examples of Yaya Sinwar and his wife's special love for money. The IDF says that Sinwar's wife has an Hermes Birkin bag, one that costs $32,000. Now, for our Indian audience, that's about 27 lakh rupees. Is it true? Is it really a Birkin, an Hermes Birkin? The story has divided the internet. The fact is, Birkins are not openly available to the public. People can't just enter a showroom and buy one. They need to be vetted first. The whole process is so tedious, there's even a class action lawsuit against Hermes. Of course, you can always buy a pre-owned bag, but critics say it's hard to imagine Sinwar's wife getting one. Plus, the Birkin that the IDF mentioned is quite large. The dimensions apparently are not right for an original bag. So the jury is still out on the Birkin. But there's no debate on why the IDF put out this story, and that too in Arabic. It was to undermine any new support for Yahya Sinwar, support that he gained in the Arab world after the video of his last moments was released. It's a fantastic example of how Israel fights the narrative war. We're waiting to see if they win this one.